My name's Jeff Regan. I get ten a day in expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Lyon. Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan, investigator, stand by for hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of Cain and Abel and the Santa Maria. This is the way it started. It was one of those cold, clammy mornings that the Chamber of Commerce doesn't like to have in print. I was in my place working on a four-minute egg that tasted like a boiled golf ball when the phone began bouncing. Now, I let it ring a while, and I got to thinking that it might be an old-fashioned girl who knew how to cook. It was the lion. Hello, Regan talking. This is me. I've been working all morning. I'll buy you a time clock. Get to the point. A uh, lucky day. I just talked to Dunn and Bradstreet. How are they? I don't be funny. We got a new client, and they tell me when the Treasury Department gets in trouble, they come to him. Yeah? The guy's name is Abel Roderick. Got a special from him an hour ago. He asked for a man, and I'm sending you, Regan. You're sending me where? His ranch. He raises horses. Horses don't talk. What's bothering him? Uh, maybe it's his wife. Tell me she's got a pair of legs she'll never forget. He just said he wanted an operator out there by 12 o'clock. You never learn, do you? This means dough. What else does it mean? We'll go as far as homicide and arson when they got pockets as long as his. Money, all you ever think about. Yeah, you learn something when you're as old as I am. That's all there is to think about. Well, then get yourself another boy and start teaching him. I don't learn easy. Now, just a minute. That's no attitude. Taking somebody's check before you know who's who and what's what means trouble. Jeffrey, please. You misunderstand me. I wouldn't jeopardize your bond or the good reputation of International by accepting an unreliable client. Look, last week that guy had a record longer than a roll of ticker tape. I've been with Harry Presidio all morning. He knows Abel Roderick. Yeah. He's the grandson of Gallant Roderick. Name used to be Rodriguez. One of our finest old California families. Jeffrey, he's a gentleman like yourself. Oh, that's nice. And he needs our assistance. Well? All right, where is it? In and route between here and Santa Ana. Take Firestone. Yeah. Now, you run out there and see what Mr. Roderick wants. And, uh, Jeffrey. I know, I know. Call me, Jeffrey. Call me if you run into any trouble. Well, when the lion hung up, he sounded as happy as a chorus girl with a new mink coat. Oh, well, he's a smart guy, I guess, but he uses check stubs for a telephone directory. Well, the home of Abel Roderick wasn't too hard to find. All I had to do was to get out on the highway and look for a hill. That's where it was. One of those old Spanish-type places with a block of porches and windows and lots of iron grill work. And 20 years ago, it might have rated the good home section, but now you couldn't tell where the grass stopped and the weeds began. It's kind of used up and sad, like a derby winner with a broken leg. A tall blonde guy, about 30, in a black polo shirt, was stretched out on a beach chair in the front porch. He pulled off his dark glasses and watched me get out of the car and come up the steps. And he gave me one of those looks, like he was already tired of knowing me. We don't want any. How do you know? We never want anything. Go away. I'm here to see Abel Roderick. You him? No. But he lives here, doesn't he? Yes. Who are you? My name's Regan. So? I want to see him. Go ahead. See him. Everybody is nice as you. Oh, I got a merit badge for being the nicest. What did you say your name was? Regan. What did you say you wanted to see him about? I didn't say. Mm-hmm. Well, it's too hot to play games, so I'll tell you. I don't like you, and he won't like you. Well, now, what am I supposed to do? Roll down the stairs? It might help, baby. Well, where'd you find him, Kane? Janie, this is Mr. Regan. He came to see your husband. I guess he has business with him. Hello, Mr. Regan. Is Abel expecting you? At 12. You're ten minutes late. Well, I'm still trying to see him. He's in the study. Come on. I'll see you later, Regan. I thought I knew all of Abel's business acquaintances, but I don't remember you. Oh, I'm a new one. What do you do? A lot of things. You're very interesting, Mr. Regan. Mm-hmm. Will you be coming here often? I don't know. 
I hope so. You keep your husband in a vault? <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> You're cute. Here we are. This is Abel's study. I guess he stepped out for a moment. Would a drink take off the uh, rough edges? Might. Good. I'll make you one. Okay. Where are the horses? Horses? I gave that up a long time ago. I've given up a lot of things, Mr. Regan. Let's not worry about that. Thanks, okay? Thanks. That blonde boy out on the porch doesn't like me. Okay. He doesn't like anybody. But let's not worry about him, either. You're crowding me. Don't you like to be crowded? It all depends on whose wife is doing it. You're worried about Abel? I'm drinking his whiskey. I've never had any complaints. I don't see why you should. What kind of a nasty crack is that? You figure it, lady. Mr. Nobody talks a little Janie like that. Hello, my dear. Introduce me to our visitor. Oh, Abel. This is Mr. Regan, darling. He says he has business with you. Regan? Oh, Regan. Yes, of course. How do you do, Mr. Regan? I'm Abel Roderick. How are you? I see Janie's made you comfortable with a drink, so we can get right down to business. Oh, uh, Janie, my dear, why don't you ask Kane if he'd like to play some tennis? You're not very subtle, darling, but I was just leaving. That's a good girl. I hope to see you again. Don't let her worry, Regan. It's an act. Do I look worried? <laughs> She's lovely, and if you're young and tall and Janie's around, she adopts you. I wasn't an orphan. Uh, she'll be sulky all day now. <laughs> well, thanks for coming out. I hope you can help me. Well, so far, I don't even know who's on the team. A man in my alleged position is quite often the object of subterfuge. You can understand that. Well, you mean because you got money, yeah. To be quite frank, I have no money, Mr. Regan. Hmm. That's going to come as a shock to somebody I know. Who? Never mind. Go on. It's my grandfather, Gallant Roderick. He controls all of the wealth in this family. You his front man? The eldest son of a son. And I live in this deplorable old shack waiting for grandfather to die. How long have you been waiting? Too long, Mr. Regan. But I'm past 40 now. I don't know how to do anything else, so I continue to wait. Along with my devoted brother, Kane, who has the same thing to look forward to. Yeah, I met him. If you think he's bad, you should meet my grandfather. He fitted us with these charming names, Cain and Abel. Well, what's all this got to do with me? Here. Look at these. Mm -hmm. Two little ships of silver. Perfect replicas of the Pinta and Nina, named after Columbus's fleet. Well, you can't buy stuff like that anymore. Not even on a time plane. Hardly. Twenty years' work on the part of an ancient silversmith in Madrid. And a prized possession of the Rodriguez family for seven generations. My great-great-great-grandmother wore them on her wedding dress. Where's the other one? You guessed it, Mr. Regan. The Santa Maria is missing. Janie wore it to Ciro's night before last. She lose it? Nothing so simple. It was stolen. How? Oh, she was with Kane. It was late when they got back. A masked man stopped their car on the turn-off. According to Janie, he was very polite, merely removed the Santa Maria, took nothing else. What about Kane? He was passed out. Janie was driving. Regan, the usual thing is for me to get a telephone call and have an opportunity to buy it back. Isn't that right? Well, a heist job usually works that way, yeah. Well, I haven't been contacted. I'm getting worried. What does your insurance company say? My grandfather owns the insurance company. I've told no one but you. You don't want him to know about it, huh? Well, he might cut me off if he thinks I've been careless. Well, what do you advise me to do? Wait for that phone call and buy it back. I'm willing to buy it back, but the truth of the matter is grandfather will be in from the east this week. The first thing he does when he comes out here is ask to see those ships. Well, now, look, whoever pulled the job couldn't unload a thing like that without being caught. And if he melted it down, he'd be lucky to get 50 bucks. He's as bad off as you are. Do you think you could hurry it up? Well, I know a couple of people. Then you'll try and contact them for me. I'll do what I can. Oh, thank you, Regan. Now we just sit back and wait for my ship to come in. <laughs> bad joke, huh? <laughs> I left him sitting there in that big room. He looked about as happy as a St. Bernard with a stomach ache. Well, he'd have probably felt worse if he'd have been outside on the porch. Janie was there with his brother, only they didn't hear me. Well, maybe they were just checking each other for broken ribs. I didn't bother to ask. Out on the highway, about a mile from the place, a 49 Nash picked me up. I turned off a couple of times on those little roads to make sure, but he stuck with me. 
Once he got real close, but he was wearing dark glasses and a straw hat. And he could have been Whistler's mother, for all I knew. When I pulled into the lot by our building about 3 o'clock, he drifted along with the Broadway traffic. I took his license number, and then I backed out and drove over to 3500 Hope Street. So I said, when I go see my friend Moriarty? Okay, buddy, well, let's say. I want to trace a license number. Actually? No. Good day, man. Try with the 11. Thanks. Next. I want to know who's registered for these plates right here. 4E7542. This year? Yeah. yeah. I'm a private detective. I think it might be connected with a case. Yeah. Makes you think that. Well, the car followed me this afternoon. Yeah. Just tell me who owned it, will you? Then what? Well, then I'm going to write you a letter. I don't collect stamps. You worked here too long, lady. You telling me. Six years I collected fines A through G. Now I'm doing this. Thanks, huh? Who does the car belong to? Oh, I gotta look. Well, the cars in Los Angeles. Thousands of cars. Mad, mad months ago, he'd brains out if he knew just how many cars there really are around this town. Well, Ruby DeRoy knows, mister, and don't you forget it. 47542 belongs to a guy named Richard I. Chambers. Address? Hotel de Soto. Thanks. Come back any time, doll. Glad to help you out. The name Richard I. Chambers meant about as much to me as a shipload of stale bread, but it didn't take 20-20 vision to see that there was a connection. And the whole thing was phony. It was like cutting your leg off to cure your bunions. Well, I went back to the office and checked with the lion. Okay, Regan, give it to me. It's a heist. One of the family heirlooms. It's our meat. When was it lifted? Two nights ago. Any contacts yet? No, none. That's why it's screwy. What do you mean, screwy? Well, it was a little silver ship called the Santa Maria. Now, they'd have to sell it back to Roderick or go on relief. Where's that leave us? With another bum case. Now, don't say a thing like that. Well, your dope on Roderick was secondhand. Uh, tell me. His grandfather keeps the keys. How do you know? Roderick said so. Mm. You shouldn't let out family secrets. Now, you let me worry about that. Just find his little ship. Yeah, yeah. Guy called half hour ago, left the number for you. Chambers? Yeah, who told you? Who did? I want you to phone him. Never mind, skip that. I know where to get him. Things began to move. That meant that all the cards were out and somebody was asking for bets. Over at the DeSoto Hotel, the clerk told me that 305 belonged to Chambers. He was a little guy, about a head shorter than Margaret O'Brien. He shoved three inches of nose out at me through a crack in the door. The one I left went for you to phone. You, Chambers? I was having a beauty nap. Come back in an hour, yeah, will you? you need it. Look out! Hey, what is this? Oh, <laughs> tough guy, yeah? All right, you're tough. I think you're a bum. All right, simmer down, Junior. You'll never make Eagle Scout. Oh, you're so good. I gotta take that from you, huh? We're gonna talk. What makes you think so? Everybody's grown up now. Dickie Chambers talks when he feels like talking. All right, squirt, have it your way. Hey, that kind of stuff ain't gonna get you nothing, Regan. Your weight's up, Dickie. You got a different job now. I said you're a bum. You tell me today. Ask your mother. What you want me to phone about? Wrong track, I'm sure. The two-buck window's downstairs. You're in this somewhere, and I want to know where. <laughs> Through being tough, Regan? I'll let the boys in the personnel division handle you. What do you mean? That shiv on your dress is about an inch too long to be legal. <laughs> Call him. See where he gets you. I'll send you a nickel later. Uh, okay, okay, I'll open. Just said I don't like to get shoved around, that's all. Why didn't you figure that before you got tangled up? I'm your contact. All right, come on, let's put the show on the road. How much does it cost? Five grand and tens and twenties. Go on. Tonight, ten o'clock, you come with him. Where? Mile of side of Santa Ana Airport. Little road turns left off 101. Drive two miles and pop. And then what? Well, if you got the five grand, you don't try anything funny. He gets his little silver ship back. That it? That's it, people. Happy? See you later, Dickie. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm checking out tomorrow. Hey, look, Buster, you aren't any heist man. They come smoother. What's your angle? Maybe I love jewelry. Do you care if maybe I love jewelry? I don't. A guy like you's got to love something. I called Roderick and told him what I'd found out. He sounded relieved, like he'd been underwater for a long time while just coming up for air. He said he'd get the cash, and I made arrangements to meet him at his place later on. Then I called the lion and told him. After that, I stopped off at a place on Wilshire, and I ran up a tab watching a skinny guy trying to make a piano sound like a symphony orchestra. Well, I had some steak and potatoes, and then I drove back out to Roderick's place. 
It was about 9 o'clock when I got there. The same people were on the front porch doing the same thing. I remembered what the lion had said about those legs of hers. Oh, Joe. Having fun? Oh, Regan, huh? I thought I told you we didn't want any. That was eight hours ago. We still don't want any. I'm still here to see your brother. More business? Something like that. I don't like you any more now than I did this morning, and I hated you then. Yeah, well, I'm going to cry about that when I get home. You're pretty smart, aren't you, Regan? Kane, please be careful. He's awful smart. Kane. Let me go. Yeah, let him go, lady. I'll give him back. Now, you're... I'll show you trying to spy on people, huh? I'm going to give you something, people. Ah. He's been drinking. Now, look out. Look out. Nothing. Go on. Oh. Well, I guess he deserved that. Nasty when he works at it. How was the other times? There aren't any other times. Too bad. Maybe he'll be different when he wakes up. What do you mean about the liquor? Skip it. You're getting the wrong idea about everything. What do you care? I was a hat check girl in a cheap nightclub. What's going on out here, Jamie? Oh, Regan, you're here. Uh, what was he acting up about tonight? Mr. Regan. Uh, well, it doesn't make any difference. Take care of him, will you, Janie? Of course, Abel. That's a good girl, Janie. Well, you all ready, Regan? You got it. All set. I'll be home early, Janie. Come on, Regan, let's go. Well, we climbed in my car. We drove to the place Dickie Chambers told me about. It wasn't hard to find. It was a flat dirt road to the edge of the airport. We clicked off two miles on the speedometer, then we switched off our lights and parked. It was dark and quiet there, like the inside of an empty barrel. Roderick didn't have much to say. He just sat there chewing on a cigar and looking at nothing. He was real good at waiting. I looked at my watch about three minutes to ten, then I saw the headlights of another car coming down the road from a long way off. Roderick nodded his head, and I began to have a feeling like I was standing on top of the trap, and the warden had just smiled at the hangman. That must be ours, Regan. Do you think we should switch on our headlights? They may not see us. Well, unless they got wings, they got to pass us. They don't seem to be slowing down much, do they? I'll get out of the car. What? Get out of the car. Say, what is Don't this? talk. Move. Oh, all right, all right. What's got into you, Regan? Come on. Well, we can't just... Well, them think something's Look, wrong. Look, this is a packed deck. You're a ringer. I'm not sure I... Spun him around and he fell against the car. I pulled out my gun, but it didn't do any good. Whoever it was must have been in vaudeville. That was the fastest disappearing act since Houdini. Listening to the story of Cain and Abel and the Santa Maria, tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator. If you are a graduate nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, you may be eligible for a commission in the regular Officers Reserve Army Nurse Corps. If you are eligible and meet the high standards to qualify to serve with this fine organization, you may elect active or inactive status. In addition to this privilege, they also have the opportunity to take advantage of special training courses. So if you believe that you qualify for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve, apply now to the Adjutant General's Office, Washington, D.C. That's the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. And now, back to the story of Cain and Abel and the Santa Maria and Jeff Regan, investigator. Well, there was enough loose lead around there to start a scrap drive. Whoever it was wanted to make real sure. My car was as full of holes as a canceled check. I found a 45 slug in the seat packing, and I piled Roderick inside, and I drove over to a motor court on the highway. An old lady with a dust mop, her head of hair, registered us and complained about all the drunks there were in this world. And then when I got rid of her, I went out to the phone booth and gave the lion a ring. I woke him up. It's 11 o'clock at night. What do you want? I'm in a jam. In a jam. Tell me about it in the morning. Look, I'm, I'm giving it to you right now. You drunk. I've been with your client trying to get that ship back. How'd you do? I got lead instead of silver. What do you mean by that? Somebody doesn't like Roderick. Who is it? I don't know. We got there for the buyback and somebody opened up. They can't do that. Well, they did. Well, where's Roderick now? With me. Get a doctor and come on over. What? He got in the way when they started the 4th of July. Well, take him to a hospital. Now look, Fatso, he isn't hurt bad, but he needs help. You're always talking about money, and here's your chance to make some. Yeah? He'll give you a bonus if you keep him out of the papers. I'll be there in half an hour. Well, the lion showed up 20 minutes later. 
He had a long-faced guy with him who said he was a doctor. He looked more like an undertaker, but I didn't argue. I told the lion to keep Roderick there till I phoned back. Then I beat it over to the DeSoto Hotel. The door to 305 was open. Dickie Chambers had company, only he wasn't receiving. He was lying under a sheet. A fat guy in a wrinkled suit seemed to be running things. Come on in, brother. I didn't know Dickie had any friends. I guess he didn't. Who are you? I'm a guy who met him once. Who are you? Ed Granger, constable. This is my territory. What's your name? Regan, private investigator. International? Mm Mm-hmm. The lion's eye, huh? Know anything about this? I talked to him this afternoon. He gave up riding horses for other things. What kind of thing? He was contact man on a heist job. Yeah? Where do you come in? I was hired. That's why I met Dickie. Mind telling me by who? Mm -mm, It's a client, Granger. This is a murder. Okay, well, better go for me. When'd you find him? A little while ago. Clerk called, said he heard shooting. I came down with the boys and found Dickie doing the long sleep. Happened less than an hour ago. He's a tough little guy. Well, them 45s don't know nothing about that. 45? Big holes. Chest and neck, close range. <laughs> Corner's gonna lose two bits. He thinks it's a 38. Well, look, if it turns out big, try this one for a match here. Oh, uh-huh. you have been playing games tonight? Somebody gave it to me. Connected? Ballistics will tell you. Mm-hmm. Anything else? No. What'd you come back for? Talk to Dickie. No good, huh? No good. I should have asked him earlier. We uh, can get you through international. Yeah. Well, if you got anything, remember the name. Ed Granger. He was peeking under that sheet looking at Chambers when I left. It was kind of a sad smile on his face, like somebody put gasoline in his thermos bottle. I drifted across the street for a package of cigarettes, and then I came back and climbed in my car thinking about the whole thing. I don't know how long I sat there in the car, but when I looked up, there was a shadow against the wall of the building. It was a good-looking shadow. Doing your homework? Yeah, I do for a diploma. Congratulations. What would you like for a gift? How about a little silver ship, huh? Sorry, too expensive. Try again. All right, give me a forty-five. What would you do with that? Give it to a cop named Granger. Then what? All right, go home and go to bed. You haven't asked me what I'm doing here. I know. Kane? Him too? He isn't so bad when you get to know him. From where you're sitting, he must have wings. Well, if it isn't the gum heel, you ready for laughs? Well, we got a comedy. Take a look, Janey. Okay, bright boy, where is he? You sober enough to shoot straight? I took the pledge. Before or after you came by us out on that road? After, baby. You don't smell like it. Where is he? Try my car trunk. I'm using him for ballast. What did you do with him, Regan? Kane, there's some people coming. Has he told you what he did with Abel? Not yet. I'm going to have to talk to him somewhere else. Right, Angel. Okay, Regan, come on, get out. Mm. Turn me up. Now turn around. Let me guess what's coming. It's a trip to the moon. Sit tight, baby. Here you go. I settled down to having a headache. Then the headache went someplace and I had nothing. Oh, it was a nice play. Everybody was a quarterback and everybody had the ball. I looked as good as a fat girl in a French bathing suit. It was some time later, maybe ten years, I had a mouthful of brandy and my throat was burning like an oil stagger. We were in Roderick's place. She was standing over me holding a bottle in one hand and a forty-five in the other. Coming around now. Got to work fast. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll talk. <clears throat> Feeling better, baby? <clears throat> well, you're going to feel worse. Now sit up, baby. Come on, it's time to talk. Now, wait a minute, Kane. Wait uh, Let me ask it. We're all alone here. No one's going to disturb us. We'll find out anyhow. Why don't you tell us what you did with him? I get a short memory. I forget things. It's a shame to let Kane do this to you. I think you're pretty. Might not be able to stop him once he gets started. It's your idea, lady. I'm along for the view. Iron men went out with short skirts, but I guess you don't know it yet. You look tough, brother, but you bruise easy. You're already wearing striped pants. You mangled it when you tagged me tonight. Think so? Tell me how. All right. No one knew I was a detective but your brother. That meant you hired Dickie Chambers to find out. So you know it. So what? So you bumped Dickie when you thought it was finished. Well, that makes you know I'm not kidding. There's a constable named Granger. Kane. Relax, Angel. Relax. Don't let him scare you. He hasn't told anything to anybody. No? No. If you did, we would have found him in a hospital. I saw him go down. Are you sure? Of course I am. Now all we got to do is find him. So let's get started. <laughs> Well, you talk now, huh? Now? It's 
Gonna get worse, baby. You might have to write it later. You got hold of a bad label. Oh, stop it, now stop it. This isn't getting us anything. Oh, yeah, but I'm having fun. No, kill him. Let go of Mr. my arm. Mr. now we need him. You've got to find him in the car with Abel. It's ruined if you kill him. That's I said let go. Ah, where were we, baby? You got to stop it. Huh? Stand away from him. Are you crazy or something? It would work fine if you could think. But you can't think. You're no good to me anymore. Janie. Janie! Ah! 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 He shook all over a couple of times like he was saying no in a big way. And then he finally relaxed. She knelt down and took something out of his pocket. I tried to lift one of my arms, but I got about as far as I would trying to hook a whale with a salad fork. I must have looked real bad, because all of a sudden her eyes kind of lit up and she came over. You've taken a lot of punishment, mister. Yeah, not as much as you're going to take. A matter of opinion. By the way, you didn't happen to be carrying that five grand. You're looking for a stake? Yeah. I'm going out prospecting. Trip around the world? Far enough to make some new connections. That's all girl, all a girl needs. Here. Here's the little ship. You didn't do it for nothing. You run out of bullets? No. If they ever get me, I'll say justifiable homicide. He's trying to kill you. You're my witness. Oh, you are pretty. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. That's all she said, and that was the last I ever saw of her. Well, it seems that Janie and Kane had figured to tag both of us out on that road, and it'd all be blamed on a phony heist gang. <laughs> there was a lot of insurance they could have turned into ready cash, but I had a feeling that when I made Abel get out of that car that night, it ruined things for him. Janie and Kane thought that they could still do it if they could find him and get us together again. That's why he went to work on me. Kane already killed Dickie Chambers because he thought there might have been a double cross, and I guess he was kind of crazy by the time he got around to me. Well, anyway, about three months later, a detective sergeant down in Miami Beach spotted Janie one night working the hat stand in a nightclub. Everybody wondered how he could recognize her. She dyed her hair, and uh, it really changed her appearance. But it figured. You see, the police folder had a picture of her in a bathing suit, and she couldn't change those legs. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Wilms Herbert as Anthony J. Lyon. It's CBS at 9.30 next week for more hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, Investigator, written by E. Jack Newman, produced by Sterling Tracy. The role of Janie Broderick was played by Lorene Tuttle. Marvin Miller was Abel and Wally Mayer was Kate. Dickie Chambers was Sidney Miller and Paul Freeze played Ed Granger. Are you a graduate registered nurse? Do you know someone who is? Then please listen carefully to this important message from the Adjutant General's Office, Washington, D.C. 29,000 nurses are needed to join the new Army Nurse Corps Reserve. For the first time in history, qualified nurses are given the opportunity of receiving a commission in the regular Army Reserve. All nurses who receive reserve commissions will benefit from the opportunity for specialized training offered to them by the Army. Don't wait. If you're a registered graduate nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, drop a card for complete information to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. Original music for this program is by Dick Aran. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is heard every Saturday at 9.30 over CBS. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.